Hello and um, welcome to a video this time showing you um, this was sent to me by a student uh, Gatika and I'm just going to prove this claim that there's no largest prime number. Uh, it's a really famous proof this. Uh, if you Google Euclid's proof that there's no greatest prime uh, you'll find tons of videos on it online and they will all use exactly the same approach as well so please if you don't like the way I explain it you'll have tons of other videos online it definitely can come up in the A level it's explicitly mentioned in the spec um, and it's a classic example of proof by contradiction and it's also my favorite so I'm gonna absolutely enjoy taking you through this proof today so okay right firstly let me argue that it's possible that there could be a largest prime number yeah prime numbers get rarer and rarer as numbers get larger and larger. I mean, look at the first 10 numbers. How many are prime? Well, you've got 2, 3, 5, and 7. So 40% of the first 10 numbers are prime. But I think there's something 20, 23, 27 prime numbers in the first 100. So there's only 27%. I can't remember. Tell me if that's wrong in the comments. I can't remember exactly what the figure is. But there's 20-ish there's prime numbers in the first 100. So it's already dropped to 27%. And in the first 1,000, it drops even lower. In other words, the density of prime numbers becomes less and less dense as you get larger and larger and larger. So maybe you do get to a point where numbers are so big that they're bound to have a factor which divides into them, which is smaller. Um, and that's why I would argue that this proof is necessary. It's not something obvious, right? It's not just, oh, well, numbers are infinite, so prime numbers are infinite. Not necessarily. We need a proof. So here goes. Now, they've tried to give you a nudge to set out your notation in a certain way here. Um, but if we're ever trying to show there's no largest prime number, we always start by assuming the opposite. It's a proof by contradiction. It's a great example of one. We assume there is a largest prime number, And I'm going to call that prime number P N, yeah, seeing as they're using this notation, uh, P N, yeah. So this is going to go P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, all the way up to the largest prime number, P N, yeah. Okay, so we've made our assumption, yeah. Now, this is not a really long proof, actually, but it's worth six marks. So we want to make sure our proof is detailed. I haven't seen the mark scheme yet for this. Um, uh, I understand. I know what you mean by it when you say uh, mark schemes can be confusing. They definitely can. <laughs> they really can. So I'm going to try and make this hopefully clearer than the mark scheme. So we've assumed there's a largest prime number, PN. This is the biggest prime number. And now this was Euclid's great trick. He said, consider a new number, the number, let's call this our number X, yeah? But X is going to be equal to P1 times P2 times P3, times P4, times P5, times P6, all the way up to our largest number, Pn, oh, plus 1, yeah? So we're creating this new number by multiplying all of the primes together from the very first one, 2, all the way up to our largest prime number, which we're calling Pn, and then we're adding 1 to that, yeah? And now we're going to ask ourselves the crucial question. We're going to say, well, is x prime? Or composite, yeah? Composite, by the way, is the opposite of prime. If a number's composite, then it's composed of factors, prime factors, and therefore it's not a prime number itself, yeah? Um, I mean factors other than one in itself, yeah? So if a number's composite, it's not prime. Um, now, is this number prime or composite? Well, this number, when you consider it, if you try and find any prime numbers that divide into it, they all leave a remainder of one. So let's write this down. If we consider x, yeah, clearly x is not divisible by any prime numbers. By any of our prime numbers. And just to explain that in a little bit more detail, as they all leave a remainder of 1 upon division. Yeah, if I divide this number by 2, there'll be a remainder of 1, because 2 is one of the factors. This is one more than a factor of or than a multiple of 2. So when you divide it by 2, it leaves a remainder of 1. It's also, though, one more than a multiple of 3, because this is a 3. Remember, P2 is 3. It's also one more than 5, because P3 is 5, etc., etc., etc. So I can say x is not divisible by any of the prime numbers, as they all leave a remainder of 1 after division.
wow, well, what can our conclusion be about x then? This implies that x must be prime itself. So x itself must be a prime number. Wow. But hang on a second. We said that PM was the largest prime number, but X is clearly larger than PM because all of these are integers and we're timesing them together and then adding one. They're positive integers as well. Yeah. So this leads to a contradiction. As X is clearly larger than PM. And this makes no sense, you know, <laughs> well, it's not, and this makes no sense. We've found our contradiction now, so now we just need the concluding remark. Yeah. So let me just put a full stop there. This leads to a contradiction that's correct. X is clearly larger than PN. Hence, our original assumption is false. And there is no greatest prime number. It's a very clever argument. I'd like to make it clear as well. Um, it's you know at first you might think, oh, this is teaching you a trick that you can always make prime numbers by timesing prime numbers together and adding one. That is true to some. Well, it's not. It's not. That's definitely not always true. It's definitely not always true. But it looks true when you times the first few prime numbers together and add one. But once you get up to a certain size, you'll find that it's no longer prime. I think you have to go up to like times 2 all the way up to 11 plus 1, or 2 all the way up to 13 plus 1. Uh, let me know in the comments if you notice which number it is. But you, you don't always produce prime numbers like this. What it's saying is if there was a largest prime number, you could always make a prime number much larger than that large prime number, which doesn't make any sense. You've reduced the argument to absurdity. In Latin, it's called reductio ad absurdum, this technique. And it just means you're reducing the argument to absurdity, and hence one of your assumptions must be false. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, well, you know, well done for finding me these questions. Any more, just send me uh, an email, and I'll try and answer it. Bye bye.